At Rutland Water today, can't think of a better place. Absolutely fantastic weather, though we have dodged some pretty horrific showers earlier on. I float here down on the Normanton bank, plenty of trout rising, plenty of fish pulling, which is the main thing. No better place to be. I often refer to it as my second home. I spend so much time here, but, but why wouldn't you? Three and a half thousand acres of bliss, amazing trout fishing on my doorstep. How lucky am I? What a place. All we need now is that fish to pull the line. So I've chose Normanton Bank. I'm approximately 60, 80 yards from the bank in roughly about 20, 25 foot of water. I've chose this spot. I've got three and a half acres. So why have I stopped right in the middle of nowhere? The reason being, we've got bright sunshine. The water is crystal tap clear. It is so, so clear. And the fish don't like the sun, so they're going to be lying deep. So you want deep water, deep sinking line, airflow sinking line, the new die three line. It's going to drop me down nice and slow into the depths and I'm going to fish the flies back, keeping them in that zone at depth for as long as possible. That's the key to a lot of the success is keeping the flies in the fish's feeding zone for as long as possible. Well, didn't take us too long. A lovely Rutland Brown here on these new six cents lines showing me the markers where to hang the flies and on the hang this fish obliged. Not a big Rutland Brown that Rutland is renowned for, but still absolute stunning looking little Rutland Brown trout. They don't get any better than that. Out here today, getting in a few sneaky house practice. There's a big, big competition coming up next Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So always get out and have a good recce to see what's going on. And whilst I'm out here, I'm, I'm testing some of this new, pretty flashy airflow kit, including the new Airlight V2 reels, matched with a V2 rod. This is the eight weight version of the rod with the seven, eight reel, matched with the Die 3. A lovely piece of kit, very easy. And what I like about it is, competitions, I'm regularly changing lines. Sun comes out, I want to be on the deck quick. Sun comes or goes away, I want to be straight to the top. So they've got the slowest of sinking lines, perfect in the clouds, you're fishing top one or two feet of water. Sun comes out, fish go down, switch to the die seven, you're on the deck pretty quickly. And no easy way, undo the spool, reconnect your die seven, die three, die five, you're one inches per second, you're fishing straight away. Save the time, switch the line, hit the depths, raise your flies, you're into a winner. Are we going to win the competition? You're going to have to wait and see that one. Who says we won't? Moved a little bit closer to the shore again. The fish seem to be hanging around the 60, 80 yard mark. So I don't want to be drifting two or 300 yards. I want to stay in the concentrated area where the fish are. And that, that's the zone. And I've got two quite heavy flies. And what I like about these airlight rods is the action is very fast and very crisp. But the rod is so incredibly light, you don't even know you're using it. I've got a, quite a hefty sinking line on in a die three. Two quite big lures on as well. Yet a rod that is just so light, no effort, no pain in the arms like you get with some of the, the heavy duty stuff. And this line, I've got to say, it is the first time I've tried it. I won't lie to you. It is so soft, so supple, and it absolutely rockets out. And it's the new six sense line. So any little nip, any little bite, I'm feeling everything at the fingertips. And that is exciting. No fish goes unnoticed. And I'm getting some pretty hefty pulls on these flies at the moment. I may have to just nip down some of the tails because 
you're getting lots of action, but there's no point in having action if you're not putting the fish in the boat. And what they're doing is these tails are giving the movement. That's the attraction, but they're grabbing the back of the marabou, they're grabbing the back of the tinsel of the perch on the dropper. But I'm not connecting with them, so I think what I need to do is just nip those back a little bit so when they grab the back end of the fly, they're actually grabbing the hook. That's what brings the fish to the net, is the actual hook, not the fancy marabou tails. So if you're getting those little pulls and nips, just trim your flies down. The other key thing you can see I'm doing now is just vary the retrieve. Imagine there's a fish chasing that fly and just speed it up a little bit. And as you stop, the sinking line's still going down, the flies are going with it, the fish are following it. That sudden movement will entice, hopefully, that big Rutland Brown to grab hold. Th these new six sense lines, they've got these perfect hang markers for you. Now, a lot of people associate the hang. So what, what do you mean by the hang? The hang is when you literally hang your flies by the boat. So they're suspended mid water, just hanging there doing nothing. And that's when the trout will often grab them. But Airflow have been clever because you don't just hang at the boat. You actually hang three or four times through your cast, which is absolutely fine. So what they've done is they've put these different marker colors through your line. So you will see I've got a quite an aqua color green here. Further down the line, it turns into a nice dark green. So when that dark green hits my rod tip, I know to stop retrieving. And when I say stop, I don't mean actually completely static because you've got a drifting boat, so you need to keep the tension with your line. But as soon as your changing color hits your rod tip, stop everything and you are now hanging halfway through your cast. Pull your line through again, it then comes to another light aqua color. Again, stop it and you're hanging. You're hanging now 10, 15 yards from the boat. But there's still one more hang to go. So again, the, the line will change color into the back to the dark green, and there's my hang. That is my boat hang. That's what you call hanging by the boat, which most people tend to do and exercise whenever they go fishing. So when you come up on the hang, your dark green hit your rod tip, you just nymph it back nice and slow, and your final hang is by using your actual butt loop or the end of the fly line to suspend your flies five and 10 foot below your cast. Great idea, Airflow. Four hangs in one cast, magic. I've been coming to Rutland now for 40 years and I'm still not bored. It's almost three lakes in one because you've got a big round area which is referred to as the basin and then you've got what they call the north arm and the south and the south arm. So you've got three lakes on one venue. Typically the basin is good for pulling lures which I'm doing now which is exciting because you're pulling as hard as you can and all of a sudden your rod just goes bang like that and then you can go down the bottom of the arms in the real shallow water fish tiny little 16, 14 dries on the chance of one of those big, infamous Rutland big brownies that are lurking, often in very shallow water. At the moment, big brownies aren't playing, but I'm getting plenty of action, plenty of excitement. So 40 years and I still don't sleep before I go fishing. Why? I just love it. The wife don't understand, and I'm sure you get the same conversations I do, but it's just in the blood. I'm often asked, how do I practice for a competition in three and a half thousand acres? Well, it's, it's quite simple. What you've got to do is break it down into little sections. Normally, I'm practicing for a comp next week, actually, for a team of six, so we'll have three pairs on the lake. So we'll split it into what they call the basin, the north arm, and south arm and what's key you have to religiously hit every piece of bank or every piece of water what a lot of anglers do is they'll come into this a mass of water here in the basin probably a thousand acres and skip about 750 acres of it and hit their favorite bits and more often than not the fish are in the non-favorite bits and that's where i find them so we'll find a bank like this it's about a mile long and we will literally zigzag in and out 80 yards out to 20 yards from the shore and work all the way down that one mile so I know that piece of bank has been covered. And my teammates would do exactly the same on the opposite piece of lake and down the top end of the lake. So the lake is properly covered. I know what flies will be working. Often we'll fish kind of lures first to draw the fish in, get the follows, get the fish chasing. So we, we locate them. And then we go around with the more natural little nymphs to actually catch them to make sure we know what they're feeding on match day. So pull your lures, get your follows, go more natural on those same fish and you will catch them.
One of the questions I'm often asked is, how do you know what fly to put on? I've got literally thousands, and I've got one of those new airflow solid boxes, which actually takes a thousand flies. So I've got a thousand in there. How do I know in the middle of May, in the middle of Rutland water on this lovely day, which fly am I gonna choose? The water's really, really clear, so that will help me decide something bright. So something the fish are gonna see and attract them in. It'll pull them to the fly. They might not take it, but like I said, it, they'll show you, the, show you that they're there and you then go more natural and get them. There's lots of buzzers hatching off, so simply look in the bottom of the boat. I can see there's some green buzzers lying about, so fish a green buzzer. The clues are all around you, you just need to look and use them. Look for the swallows in the sky, that would show there's a hatch happening. Look for swans, and this is a favourite one of mine. Look for swans dipping in the weed. That's turning up the crixa, the shrimp, the larvae, and there will be a fish almost behind most swans. One of the key signs is we have these predatory cormorants on our lakes. They're here to eat the fish, so they will tell you where the fish are. You see a couple of cormorants, especially when they're diving and coming up and re-diving, they're looking for something that's there. A good indication, not nice, but it's a trick I use all the time. So look out for those cormorants chasing those fish. That's a good clue. In terms of bright flies, try and steer away from two or three bright flies close together, especially in this crystal clear water. These fi fish, they're chased regularly. They see a lot of bright oranges, bright pinks, greens and yellows, all those horrible colours. So try and avoid two of them too close together. And what I like to do is fish a little team. So I tend to fish four flies on about a 20 foot leader. I'll have a blob on the top. I'll have a small natural nymph behind it. I'll have another little nymph eight foot away from that and then five foot to another blob. Now what I'm doing there is I'm drawing the fish into that blob, but it's close enough to that attractor for the fish to see that at the same time. So they chase this horrible gaudy pink thing, yet eat a size, little size 12 cruncher, natural little nymph on the dropper. It's a massive trick, but it works time and time again. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you guys, but I'm here to do a job. I've got a big competition in two weeks. I'm not really catching many fish. I'm doing far too much talking, so it's time to stick the competition head on, head down and get the job done. Here it comes, here it comes. That's what you need. That's a competition head on, you see, that's what happens. That's what can happen. Beautiful Rutland rainbow. See what a difference? Put my competition head on. First cast, a fish just rose, dropped a booby on its nose and stroked it across it, got it chasing, pulled it hard and then the fish absolutely nailed it. And because I'm on this new six Sense non-stretch lines, I felt everything and it was epic. You could see the fish really powerful, taking that rod on a full curve, but I was always in charge, plenty of power in the rod to bring that fish to the net. What an amazing fight. What a sensitive, sensational battle won by the angler. I've noticed this great big dirty dark storm coming to, to pay as a visit, so good job of kitting out in the new Airtex waterproof clothing. Feels nice, looks nice, certainly keeping me dry, but we're going to give it a good test in a minute by the looks of things. was awesome chasing that booby across the top stopped it it stopped I carried on pulling it chased it again I stopped and then it ate it bless its little heart you've made my day because that was well exciting oh it's a lovely Rutland brownie look at that beautiful absolutely stunning it might not be massive but just check out the spots on this little fella 
Look at that. It's a lean, mean Rutland fighting machine. The waterproofs have certainly been fully tested in these heavy downpours. Pleased to say I'm still dry. The rod's performed its, its absolute best. It's quite powerful and it's very fast tipped, allowing me to cover the fish quick. When you've got rising fish, you need to be fast, you need to be accurate. And this air light is doing the job. Reels, we've stood the, the day as well. The lines are casting great. They're smooth, they're slick, they shoot beautifully. Looking forward to giving these a good go through the season ahead. Thank you.